As part of the SRA-funded Collaborative Precision Agriculture Research Project, Dr. Rob Bramley has been investigating the possible usefulness of an on-the-go CCS sensor. Unfortunately, one thing that the sugar industry doesn't have at the moment is a, is a CCS sensor on the harvester. But what we'd like to be able to do is to understand how CCS varies around a block with the same sort of spatial resolution that we now understand how yield varies around the block. And some preliminary work that we did a couple of years ago that was reported at AWSCT suggested that about 23% of the variation in income for a farmer derives from variation in CCS within a block. Now you can say on the, on the one hand that that means that 77% of the income variation is due to yield. But nonetheless, and we, this is only one example that we've done this, the sums on this, 23% is probably a big enough number for people to sit up and take notice. Dr. Bramley repeated the study at a more variable site in the Burdekin to find out whether the effect of CCS variation on block income was similar, or perhaps larger. And so what we've been doing with these pegs and through all the harvest of this, this area of TELUS today is as the harvest has progressed we've been cutting out samples around about, a, about 220 samples over an area of about 8 hectares I think it is. And uh, those samples are all going to be analysed in the lab back at the SRA station. And um, so we'll end up with CCS information for each of these points and we can then interpolate a CCS map from that. Now obviously in a commercial situation nobody's going to go to the effort that we've been going to today in collecting that large number of samples and analysing them. But what we hope to be able to do is to show that CCS variation either follows a similar pattern to yield and, and the soil variation in this block or if it doesn't show that the pattern of CCS variation is the same as it was last year when we did the same thing and if it is that tells us that developing some technology to sit on the harvest to, to measure CCS is a worthwhile thing for the industry to pursue because then farmers like Dennis can think about how to manage the variation in terms of yield and also manage the variation in terms of CCS. This map on the left shows yield on the study block. In the center is the map of CCS variation from NIR analysis of the 220 samples. CCS of the samples ranged from 14.5 to 18.7, though the range appears smaller on the map due to the smoothing process. The map on the right combines the yield and CCS information to show us the overall variation in sugar yield. This information can be combined with the cane payment formula to calculate income for the block. So how much did CCS variation affect income? On the left we see variation in income due to both cane yield and CCS. The map on the right uses the median value for this field as a fixed yield to determine how much of the variation is caused by CCS. In this case it's 21%, which is similar to previous research. So is an impact on income of 20-25% to 25 enough to support development of a CCS sensor? Well, first we need to know if the CCS patterns are stable over time. If we recall the Precision Ag process, we know that this information is most valuable for making management decisions for the future. So we need to know if the pattern is going to be similar in the future. These maps show variation in CCS at the Burdekin study site in 2012 and 2013. In the six maps showing comparisons between the years, researchers used different analysis techniques to look for similarities. However, the patterns from year to year appear somewhat different. The map on the far right combines CCS information from both years and adjusts for differences in the yearly averages. From this map, it appears that there is some stability from year to year. One possibility for the between-year differences could be the relatively low density of samples. 220 samples sounds like a lot, but when they're spread over nearly 7 hectares, it's not really. So researchers need a prototype sensor to obtain enough data to determine whether a sensor is needed. In the future, researchers hope to develop a prototype CCS sensor to increase the density of CCS information that can be collected in the field. Eventually, combining CCS maps with yield maps could provide a more complete picture of on-farm variability and enable more accurate management to maximize profits. <laughs>